Good day, YouTube. It's a good day. My name is Captain Darren, my call sign N4VFR. Today, I'm going to install and set up the Sun SDR2 DX by Expert Electronics. Stay tuned. Okay, guys, welcome. We're on my desktop. What we're going to do first, we're going to download the software from the Expert Electronics SDR website. So it's eesdr.com. Okay, first thing we need to do, find your SDR. Mine is the Sun SDR2 DX. And we're going to go and select the software. I'm running a Windows, so we have two versions. The Expert SDR2 version 1.3.1 update 11. And also the Expert SDR2 X64 version 1.3.1 update 11. So I believe this the top one is for a 32-bit system. And the, the second one is for a 64-bit. So I'm going to do the 64-bit and save. Okay, while well that's downloading, we have information about the release notes. You can take a look at those here. Now let's go to the download folder. Under downloads, double click on the file we just downloaded and extract it. And let's run it anyways. Click on yes. Choose your language, English, accept, next. Leave it as default file name. And let's create a shortcut. Click next and install. Agree to the conditions. Continue to install with the Microsoft Visual C++. Setup failed. They're saying that there's another version of this product already installed. And uh, you know why? Because I have the HDSDR software installed. So I'm going to close that. And this is completing the Expert SDR2 Sun SDR2 at DX setup wizard. Click finish to exit the setup. I think it's still going to run. It's right here. So I got two SDR programs. This is what I use for my ICOM 7610, the HD SDR. The next thing we need to do is we need to um, assign an IP address. So I have the network cable already connected to the Sun SDR2 and to the PC, which is a mini PC behind the monitor. So we're going to assign an IP address. And before we do that, let me show you the documentation that I'm using to follow. Go to your to the website, the Expert Electronic website. Go to the documentation, and what I downloaded was this one right here. It's called "Setting Up Sun SDR2 Pro for Dummies" by Pete, and his call sign is MM0TWX. So. Download that, and this is actually what I'm using right here. Okay, so we're at the first procedure. All right, so what we need to do here, we need to go into your search window, and we need to type network.
Okay, network connections. Click on that. We're using Ethernet. Just one click on the Ethernet, highlight it. We want to change settings of this connection. Okay, so now we got the Ethernet properties. We're going to choose IPv4. Highlight that, and then we're going to go to the properties. Next, we're going to click on use the following IP address. And this is what we're going to type. 192.168.1.1. Sixteen dot fifty. Click in the subnet mask box. Okay, that auto populated. And then let's see what else it says here. And then it says click OK. That should work. So close out now we should have connectivity from my PC to the SDR all right I have the coax from my antenna connected now to the SDR and um, it's telling me now to turn on the radio this is the first time I'm turning on the uh, Sun SDR 2 DX I wonder if you can see it there. I got the uh, the green light. All right, my indicator is green, and we're going to start the software. All right, the software is now running. Let's double check to see if the software is actually talking to the SDR radio. So click to options, and under here it says device. It says Sun SDR2DX. Click on apply, click OK. And to turn on the software, you have to turn, you have to push this button here. It says here you need update, you need update the Sun SDR2DX firmware. Do you want update the Sun SDR2 DX firmware yes so the firmware on the radio is actually now being up to date my PC the mini PC it's actually connected by Wi-Fi and I'm actually using the cat5 connectivity connected directly to the Sun SDR2 Pro I'm um, sorry, Sun SDR2 DX. I think it's completed. Let's turn on the SDR again or the software. I don't know how to use the software. I hear a relay is clicking. I'm not sure if it's on or off. <laughs> okay, guys. If you run to this problem here, you turn it on the the uh, software. You hear the relay is clicking in the transceiver, but it's actually not displaying the waterfall. And we've already verified that. You have connectivity on the Sun SDR2 DX or Sun SDR2 DX. When you click on Discover here, it does show that you are connected and there's a local area network IP address and the port that we're using. There's no waterfall, right? This is what you need to do. Let's minimize this. 
Okay, let's close that one out. You need to go to the firewall. What's preventing it from talking or communicating is the firewall. So Windows search type firewall. And then you want to go to allow an app through Windows firewall. We want to change settings. Scroll down till you see the expert SDR. In my case, why do I got two? So I'm going to go ahead and click both of them. Click on private and also click on public. That's going to allow the software to go through and pass traffic back and forth. Click OK. Let's go back to the software. Turn on the radio. There you have it. Took me about 15 minutes trying to figure that out. So I'm having my lunch. It's pizza. Time out. Let me finish this. Okay, guys. Uh, I ran into some problems, and I had two fellow ham operators that are pretty much subject matter experts into the uh, the Sun uh, SDR, and um, their names are uh, Rick. His call is N8 SDR, and also Doug. His call is KB2 UKA. So when I was chatting with them, I told them that, hey, I was trying to transmit using the microphone. It's the uh, Yaesu991A hand mic. It's the MH31 hand mic. I wasn't able to transmit. So this is what they told me. Uh, go up here. Look at your display here on the upper right corner. You see where it says mic 2. There was a drop down. By default, it was mic one. So we've changed that and put it on mic two. The second thing is when I was transmitting, I wasn't getting the the power out. All right. So take a look. When I transmit, I'm gonna turn on the volume, make sure that the frequency is clear, and you can watch the the transmitting power. Oh, it's, it's right here. Uh, unmute, unmute my speakers. Is the frequency in use and for VFR. All right, so you see that I'm now putting out power. So by default, this is what happened. This is where it was. You go to options and go to display and under indicators by default it was RMS so when you when you're trying to to transmit I was looking at the power output and it was only putting like five watts take a look is this frequency in use this is November 4 Victor Foxtrot Romeo and you see that it's only putting out about 5 to 15 watts and this is N4 VFR clear there you go. There you have it. It's working great. Man, I love this SDR. Don't get me wrong. Looking down here, the ICOM 7610, that's another good radio. Okay, let's try to make my very first contact on the Sun SDR2 DX. Okay, QSL, okay, so I'm going to stand by here, here and, and figure out figure why I got, I got this uh, uh, monitor, monitor and, and it's uh, uh, aggravating, aggravating me. me. Over. Over. Okay, so um, now you go back to your sound card. Um, and there, I believe you want to make the input nothing because you're using mic two. And then uh, play around with your output. Um, do you have headphones plugged directly into the radio or into the computer? Uh, no headphones. I figured it out. Okay, very good. I figured it out. So I went to options and then under sound card, I had the channel one enabled. So I disabled the sound card 
uh, on channel one and only put a check mark in this sound card enabled so it sounds better now over all right good and now when you do a youtube video or when you use obs you're going to want to pump the audio out through channel one into obs but we'll get into that later okay qsl oh by the way i'm recording our conversation on my camera so uh using the um the external uh, computer speakers. I'm using Vanatu's uh, T1E uh, computer speakers and your audio sounds great. Um, one day I want to get this configuration setting correct and uh, I'll be able to get it out there with a little bit more bass. But uh, does it sound good with this hand mic? I'm using the uh, Yaesu 991A hand mic. Over. <laughs> No, from what I'm hearing, Darren, it sounds really good. In the on the right hand side of the screen, above the um, the frequency spectrum, that's your receive bandwidth. What do you have it set on right now? 3.0 or 3.5? Okay, I'm looking at it. Uh, I'm not sure where to look. I'm looking at the frequency and where is it again? Um, I believe when I was just in there, look in the top right hand, the top right of the screen, you'll see like um, 2.5K, 2.7K, 3K, I think 3, uh, three. I'm at 3K. 3 and 3.5. Okay, QSL, I'm at 3.0, 3.0K, uh, over. Okay, while I'm talking, click 3.5. And then take your mouse, and um, with the first time you do this, you might go off frequency if you don't do it right. Hover the mouse over the furthest gray part of the box that's on the lower side band of my signal, and then cl click and hold and stretch it to the left so that it's, uh, my entire signal is within that box. I'm forced. <laughs> I lost him. <laughs> File. Um, the whole four kilo, uh, kilo, excuse me, four kilohertz. You'll hear the whole spectrum if you open it up to match it. Over. Okay, QSL. I need to uh, make the the uh, the display a little wider. So let me figure out how to do that first. Or can you explain that to me? Over. So you're going to, oh man, I gotta go back into these two. Um, you have to change the sample rate, not on the sound card. It's in, um, uh, you gotta make it 312. It's probably set on 30 something when the software first is opened. Uh, it might have been that screen that I had you click info. Hold on, let me look at the pictures I took. Uh, let's see. That's Doug. He's called us uh, KB2UKA. You know what? It, yeah, you have to change the sample rate. It's in one of those options in the top right. It's either um, the hard drive button. I think it's the hard drive button. Click okay. that and tell me if you see sample rate. Yeah, QSL. Uh, it is uh, sample rates at 312 kilohertz. Okay, you need it 312. You should have seen your pan adapter change. It's already 312. Let me change it. To, well, that's the maximum setting. I think I need to zoom in. That's what I'm trying to figure out how to do it to make it wider so you have a, a, a broader scale. By holding the right mouse button near one of the numbers of the frequency. Like if you, if, you, if you click and hold the right mouse button on 7180 on that number and slide to your right, it'll, it'll zoom in. Sliding to your left will zoom back out. Okay, there you go. That's better. Now I can see it better now. Darren, I lost you. I'm going to type in the message. KB2 UK clear. Okay, 73 is Doug. KB2 UKA. This is N4 VFR. Well, there you go, guys. That's my first contact uh, 
that's Doug. He also has a YouTube channel. You need to check it out. Uh, I think his uh, look for his call sign. His call sign is Kilo Bravo Two Uniform Kilo Alpha KB Two UKA. So check it out. What a day! I hope you enjoyed my video. It was so fun setting it up and and uh, troubleshooting it also. And special thanks go to the person that created this, the setting up Sun SDR2 Pro for dummies. And his name is Pete, call sign MM0TWX. And also special thanks to, uh, we got here, Doug. His call sign is KB2UKA and also Rick, N8SDR. They both have YouTube channels. You can check it out. All you need to do is do a search on their call signs. Well, thank you for watching and stay tuned for more videos from Captain Darren. My call sign is N4VFR. If you haven't done so, please consider to subscribe to my channel. Give me a like. Leave me some comments. To give me some pros and cons. Have you used this radio before or have you um, are afraid of going to the SDR because it's it's really complicated to set up not at all it's pretty easy it just takes time watch my videos if you have any questions you can contact those two ham radio operators Rick or Doug or myself till next time have a great day